Hello there. Welcome to our sharing here at YouTube of the subject matter of real property tax under the local government code on local taxation. This is a part of uh, our online uh, curriculum for the College of Law of the University of Manila even when the students have not all be enrolled so far. However, it is also our intention to dedicate this particular sharing on the real property tax with the uh, 81 uh, provincial governors all over the Philippines and about 122 mayors and vice mayors, including the members of their provincial board and also their municipal councils. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Dean Jos Santos Balagtas Biskera. I am the incumbent Dean, College of Law, University of Manila, and Vice President for Legal Affairs and Member, Board of Trustees. I have a Bachelor of Business Administration, major in accounting, and a certified public accountant from the University of the East, Summa Cum Laude. I have my Master of Business Administration, University of the Philippines in Diliman, Magna Cum Laude, and Valedictorian. My Bachelor of Laws is from the University of the East, Cum Laude, and Valedictorian. After finishing my collegiate uh, course, I joined the corporate world and gradually rose up to senior corporate management in financial management, joining multinationals and big local companies to include Fuji Xerox, Motorola, ESO, which became Petron, GlaxoSmithKline, Meralco's Construction Division, Eco Asia, Delgado Brothers Incorporated, Furadan, and Permaline. When I passed the bar examination, and even when I was full-time in the corporate world, I would take a leave to appear as trial lawyer in several of the regional and metropolitan trial courts in Manila and the surrounding provinces. This practice and my background in uh, corporate uh, practice allowed me to be nominated twice as Associate Justice of the Supreme Court in 2012 and 2016. I have also about 30 years uh, as uh, MBA professor in financial management at De La Salle University and at the University of the Philippines in Diliman. Today, I continue to be a practicing lawyer, a bar reviewer and law professor, and uh, started with this program on online uh, instruction for the University of Manila. So far, we are the one of the schools that have immediately switched to the technology of using YouTube in order to upload their lessons even before our students get to be enrolled. To start the ball rolling on real property tax, Allow me now to share with you the concept of real property. Real property consists of the land, any buildings and other improvements attached to the land, including the rights of use and enjoyment of said land and its improvements. What are the three classes of real properties? Number one, residential, agricultural, commercial, industrial, 
and mineral ore mining. These classes of real properties include also timberland and special categories of real properties that we will later on show you. Real properties include immovable properties and improvements. Continuing with the discussion on real properties, immovable properties, which is part of real property, include lands, buildings, and constructed structure attached to the soil. Improvements, in turn, include reasonable permanent artificial alterations of the ground or a valuable addition or amelioration to property than mere repairs or replacement of waste, costing labor or capital to enhance its value, beauty or utility, or to adapt it for new or further purposes. Machinery, which is part of the tax base for real property, consists of physical facilities for production, services facilities, mobile self-propelled and self-powered equipment and those not permanently attached to the real property which are actually directly and exclusively used and are necessary to meet the needs of the particular industry. These machineries, if we were to enumerate, would include the machines, the equipment, the mechanical contrivances, the instruments, the appliances or apparatus which may or may not be attached permanently or temporarily to the real property. Continuing now, the machinery not permanently attached to real property, and this is one of the most difficult subject matters to reconcile with civil law, machinery not permanently attached to real estate is taxable real property when it is an essential and principal element of an industry, work or activity without which such industry or activity cannot function. Taxable machinery includes the physical facilities available for production, with installations and appurtenant facilities together with those not permanently attached to the real estate but are actually directly and essentially used for the needs of the particular industry, business, or works, which by their very nature and purpose are designed for or essential to manufacturing, commercial, mining, industrial or agricultural purposes. Machineries attached to land and buildings are not taxable, are taxable rather, even though actually directly and exclusively used for religious, charitable or educational purposes. Improvements are not machinery for tax exemptions. Let me emphasize this because this is something confusing if this were given on the bar examinations, we repeat, machineries attached to land and buildings are taxable, even though they actu actually directly and exclusively use for religious, charitable, or educational purposes. So here is a situation where the machinery is attached to the land and building, but the land and building is used exclusively for religious, charitable, or educational purposes. Therefore, the land and buildings are supposed to be tax exempt. And so the logic here is if the machineries are attached to the land, they become part of the land and building and therefore also enjoy the same tax exemptions. The decision of the Supreme Court points out 
that these machineries do not represent improvement. Because, and therefore, the machineries could not be included as uh, tax exemption an integral part of the land and building. Very, very tricky uh, potential bar question. Equipment that are movable or portable, such as computers, typewriters, and the like, shall not be considered as machinery subject to the real property tax. And so therefore, expounding on the movables for real property tax. Conceptually, movables are personal properties. And yet, when you go to the real property uh, provisions of the local tax code, there are movables that are included as part of the tax base for real property tax purposes. Movables immobilized by destination because they are essential and principal elements in the industry are taxable. This will include machineries of breweries used in the manufacture and liquor and soft drinks, though movable in nature are immobilized because they are essential to said industries. Here, one of the most uh, interesting uh, issue was when I was with the finance manager of Motorola, a semiconductor company. In Paranaque, I had tremendous dis uh, disagreement with then Mayor uh, Pablo Olivares because of the concept that our machineries are movable uh, machineries in the, in the assembly line for integrated circuits were actually mobile. They were not attached to the uh, building. And yet, they proposed to include these machineries as taxable under the real property tax. Not because they are immovable, and even if they are movable, they become part and essential of said industry. And so that was my major concern then that even when the, uh, our equipment in the semiconductor industry were mobile, they can be arranged, they have wheels. Still in all, it is not because of the uh, permanency of their attachment to the building that made them taxable under real property taxation. It is because they are essential, they are indispensable in the business of assembling and manufacturing integrated circuits and semiconductors. The delivery trucks and adding machines they own, meaning the breweries, and use and are found within their industrial compounds are merely incidentals and retain their movable nature and so that therefore they would be excluded from real property taxation. Movables immobilized because they are merely incidental and not principal. Excuse me. I repeat that portion which says movables immobilized because they are merely incidental, not essential and principal, are not taxable. They include gas registers, computers and printers, check writers among others in hotels, restaurants, theaters, which are merely incidentals and are not considered immobilized by destination. For these businesses can continue or carry on their function without this equipment. Airline companies use forklifts, jeep wagons, pressure pumps, IBM and computer machines, and similar movables, which are incidentals, not essentials, and thus retain their movable nature and therefore excluded from the taxable base of real property tax. What is then, therefore, the real property tax? The real property tax is an ad valorem, meaning based on value, ad valorem tax on real properties such as lands and buildings and other improvements and machineries 
imposed by provinces, cities, and municipalities within the metropolitan Manila area. Here is a tabulation of the three local government units that are entitled to collect and impose real property tax. For the province, uh, there is a 1% real property tax based on the assessed value of the properties. For cities and municipalities within Metro Manila, take note, the municipalities are limited to Metro Manila because these municipalities do not form part of any province unlike the other municipalities that are integral part of the province. And so the cities and municipalities can impose a 2% real property tax based on assessed value. It would be interesting therefore to understand what is assessed value. The real property tax is based on the assessed value of the property. And so the assessed value of the property is a certain percentage of its market value. So the starting point of the assessed value is the market value of the property. And here, the Bureau of Internal Revenue for purposes of computing the capital gains tax. And now, the, the uh, provincial and city assessors for determining uh, the real property tax and also the transfer tax uh, on uh, the transfer of real pro uh, property ownership would depend upon their database on what is the latest selling price of a similar property within or proximate to the vicinity of the property. And so that, for example, in our case in Fuji Xerox, we were operating our uh, company at Edison Avenue along the West Service Road in Paranaque. And so when we were trying to determine how the provincial, the city assessor determined our assessed value, they referred to the sale of Toyota, which is a few kilometers away from us, as the basis of their assessed value. On the premise that the nearest property to us, which is uh, in our case a commercial uh, industrial area, is Toyota. And we complained because we said, we are inside Edison Avenue and Toyota is along uh, the West Service Road and that could not be a comparable uh, basis. But they insisted that uh, Toyota, uh, who just sold their property, would be the most logical reference point to determine our assessed value. So the assessed value of the property is a certain percentage of its market value and the market value of the Toyota properties that were sold were based on the uh, deed of sale that was undertaken uh, by Toyota. Continuing now, the assessment value of the property is the assessment level applied to the market value of the property. So the property based on that particular real latest experience on the buying and selling of property within the area for the same category would now be uh, taken a look at, you know, the market value, and will be multiplied by the assessment value of the prop, of, of the uh, assessment level of the property as defined by the provincial or city uh, council. And so they will have assessment values. We'll talk about that in a little while. And the assessment level is fixed by the local Sangunian ordinance based on the actual use of the property. The fair thing about this is, if this is based on the ordinance, that means that the people, the taxpayer, would have an opportunity to enjoy due process of law because a public hearing would have to be conducted by the respective uh, Sangunians in order to have a basis of approving the assessment levels. Now, let us take a look now at the land's assessed value. Here is a tabulation of the assessed value of the lands 
broken down into the class of lands that are in existence. For example, in the case of residential lands, the assessment level is 20%. So that if, for example, uh, in a certain locality, the uh, market price per square meter happens to be 10,000. That's a market value, 10,000 per square meter. And so the assessment level will be 20% of 10,000, which is 2,000. And so it is the 2,000 that will be used by the province to multiply it by 1%. And if it is a city, it will be at 2%. Now for agricultural lands, it is at 40%. For commercial, industrial, and mineral lands, it will be 50%, and for timber land, that is 20%. And these particular assessment levels are determined, this is the more popular one now, are determined by the Sangguniaan's uh, concern. On the area of the buildings assess value, these are the buildings and other structures. They are again divided into residential and in this residential area, the assessment levels uh, would be divided among those whose properties fair market value do not exceed 175000 But uh, if the property already reaches 1 million, then the assessment level would be at 60%. In the area of agricultural uh, buildings, then if the building's fair market value is 300,000, the assessment level is 25%, against which the 1 or 2% would be applied. But if the agricultural uh, building is worth 2 million, then the assessment level will be 50%, against which the tax of 1 to 2% is applied. For commercial, industrial, and mineral uh, uh, buildings, meaning their buildings standing on commercial, industrial, and mineral land, if the amount does not exceed, the fair market value does not exceed 300,000, the tax would be at 30%. But if the building is worth 10 million, then the assessment level will be at 80%. That means 8 million becomes the basis for computing the real property tax of 1 or 2 percent. For timberland, for those whose value of the building do not exceed 300,000, it is at 45 percent. But if the property reaches 2 million, the assessed value is 70 percent. In the case of machinery, assessed value, Obviously, here you will have no timberland, uh, which is a lagging concession. And so for the machinery to be located in a residential area, you will have for, residential machi for machineries installed in residential areas, your assessment level is 40%. If the machinery is located in an agricultural area, it is 50%. And if the machinery is located in a commercial, industrial, or mineral area, it becomes 80%. Now here is where we go into the special classes of lands, buildings, machinery, and other improvements. You will notice that there are special classes of real property categorized as either cultural, scientific, hospital, that's local water district and government-owned or controlled corporations engaged in the supply and distribution of water and or generation and transmission of electric power. So if there are lands, buildings, machinery, or other improvements, but they are being used for cultural purposes, those lands, buildings, machinery, equipment would have an assessed, uh, assessment level of 15%. So that if the property, for example, is worth 10 million, 15% uh, of 10 million becomes 1.5 million. The same is true with scientific. The assessment level is 15%. Uh, 
for hospitals it is 10 percent for local water districts it is lower at 10 percent and for government owned or controlled corporations engaged in the supply and distribution of water and the or generation and transmission of electric power then you have 10. so it's very easy to categorize now the special classes cultural scientific and hospital uh, land buildings machinery and improvements straight at 15 percent assessment level against which the one to two percent uh, real property tax is imposed for local water districts and government uh, uh, owner controlled corporations in water and electric power it is uniform at 10 percent Now, are there exemptions from real property tax? The answer is yes. The first category of exemption from real property tax, meaning the owner of that particular property or the user actually, uh, will not have to pay real property tax. Number one is real property owned by the Republic of the Philippines. Obviously, the Republic, the government itself, the national government, will not tax itself or any of its political subdivisions, meaning the provinces, the cities, the municipalities, and the barangays. Except, and this is the beautiful subject matter that can be in the bar examination, except when its beneficial use has been granted for consideration or otherwise to a taxable person. There is a Supreme Court uh, decision where a particular mining company was operating a concession up there in the mountains. And obviously the province uh, wanted to uh, take a look at this and the provincial assessor issued an assessment uh, and of course the uh, demand for the payment of real property tax. The mining company said that they are not the owners of that particular uh, mining site. It is a, it's essentially a mountain. So they said, we cannot own a mountain. We were only given the concession to uh, operate and mine the, this, the minerals out of this mountain. And so if you want to collect, you might as well go to the national government because this is public property. And it was a very beautiful case. It went up to the Supreme Court. And the decision was, while it is true that the Republic of the Philippines are not uh, subject to real property tax, when the government allows a taxable person like a mining company to use, to beneficially use such mountain for mining purposes, then the burden of the tax, conceptually we will learn this as the user of the property now, in this case, the, the mining company becomes to be the beneficial user and is therefore subject to tax. So conceptually that building, which is public domain, is not subject to real property tax. But when the Republic of the Philippines granted the mining rights to this particular mining company, then the mining company, a taxable person, becomes taxable on the real property tax for being the beneficial user. The second category of those exempted from paying the real property tax are charitable institutions, churches, parsonages, or convents, appointing them thereto, mosques, non-profit, or religious cemeteries. Why does this sound uh, very familiar? This was lifted from the 1987 Constitution and integrated into the local tax code of the local government code. And the second category are all lands, buildings, and improvements actually directly and exclusively used for religious, charitable, and educational purposes. But let me again remind you of an earlier side which says that there can be certain machinery, you know, notice here all lands, buildings, and improvements. It did not mention machinery. So that if the building is used for religious, charitable, or educational purposes, 
and there is a machinery attached to the building that machinery could not form part of the building because the machinery is not considered an improvement to allow exemption from real property tax. The third category are all machineries and equipment that are actually directly and exclusively used by local water districts and by government-owned or controlled corporations engage in the business of supplying and distribution of water for the local water districts and generation and transmission of electric power for the GOCCs. This particular uh, type of operation of the local water districts and the GOCCs in uh, electric power generation, all their machineries are exempted from real property tax. All real property by duly registered cooperatives as provided for under Republic Act 6938 are exempted from paying real property tax. Machinery and equipment used for pollution control and environmental protection are exempted from real property tax. And a red uh, note here, any exemption from the payment of the real property tax previously granted to or presently enjoyed by all persons, whether natural or juridical, including all GOCCs, were withdrawn upon the effectivity of the local government code except as provided in the LGCC. In effect, this particular enumeration of property by the Republic of the Philippines, charitable institutions, etc., lands and buildings for religious charitable educational purposes, the machineries and equipment of local water districts, and GOCCs, and finally, cooperatives and those for pollution control and environment are the exclusive list of the exemptions provided for in the local government code. So that at the time the local government, the new local government road uh, was enacted and the, re, the re, new real property tax was enacted, the exemption previously enjoyed by any organization whatsoever is deemed to have been repealed or withdrawn by reason of the uh, local government code enactment. What are the nature of these exemptions? These exemptions were given either by reason of ownership, they were given by reason of the character of the exempt entity, and by reason of usage. Let us take a look at the exemptions by reason of ownership. Here, the Republic of the Philippines, the national government, its political subdivisions, province, city, municipality, or barangay, and the registered cooperative are considered exempted by reason of the owners. The Republic of the Philippines is owned by all the citizens of the Philippines. The political subdivisions are essentially owned by the, the same Republic of the Philippines with the citizenship as its subject matter. And the registered cooperatives are the members of the cooperative who become owners. Now, let me just put emphasis that in the exemption by reason of ownership, only the component of governance under the political concept become exempted from taxation. And we already know the concept of political subdivision of the government. The political subdivision includes any and all agencies that are involved in policy formulation and execution in the exercise of the police power of the state. And so any agency falling under the national government or any of these uh, political subdivisions would be considered exempted from uh, prayer property tax. In the national government, obviously, we have the armed forces of the Philippines and the Philippine National Police. And so these are uh, clear agencies that are exercising their authority 
by reason of the political nature of their organization. However, when government engages in business, it is allowed to organize corporations for profit. And these corporations are attached agencies to the Republic of the Philippines national government or any of these political subdivisions. Such government-owned or controlled corporations, except those that are involved in power generation that we mentioned a while ago, would be subject to tax if the reason for existence is because the government is engaged in business. Now, exemptions by reason of the character of the exempt entity. This would include three areas, charitable institutions, houses and temples of prayer like churches, parson units or convents, and mosques, and finally non-profit or religious cemeteries. By the very reason that they are charitable institutions, they are uh, houses and temples of prayer, and they are non-profit or religious cemeteries. By that very nature, they are considered exempted from real property taxation. Now, exemptions by reason of usage. It says here, all lands, buildings, and improvements which are actually directly and exclusively used for religious, charitable, or educational purpose. So because of the religious, charitable, and educational usage of those lands, buildings, and improvements, take note machinery is not part of that. You know, the, uh, the lands, buildings, and improvements are not subject to real property tax. The second category, all machineries and equipment actually directly <coughs> and exclusively used by local water districts or by government owned or controlled corporations engaged in the supply and distribution of water and on the generation and transmission of electric power by the very usage of this equipment and machinery to generate and distribute water and to generate and transmit electric power such usages provided the nature of the exemptions and finally all machinery and equipment used for pollution control and environmental protection that is the very usage pollution and environmental protection would allow the exemptions for this machinery and equipment from the imposition of the real property tax this particular slide now brings up a very important concept in real property taxation. It says actual use and not ownership becomes the real basis of real property taxation. And it reads, real property is taxed based on actual use even when the owner is not the owner, even when the user is not the owner. We have already demonstrated that a while ago when we were talking about the mining company who does not own the, the mountain on which the mining uh, uh, right was given. Still in all, because it is using that particular mountain to extract mine, then the user may not be the owner because the owner is the Republic of the Philippines. It is only enjoying a mining right, but still in all, it becomes uh, liable for paying the real property tax. The new real property tax code of 1974 came out when presidential decree 464 was issued. The new tax code changed the policy in real property taxation by taxing the real property based on actual use even when the user is not the owner. Now here is a, an anticipated classic question in the bar exams. And this is something that everybody should be able to, to answer. Sorry. I'm sorry for that interruption. Again, we go back to that slide. The real property tax is based on actual use, even when the user is not the owner. In the bar examination, this has been given and expect this to be given again. Here is, for example, a property. 
and the owner uh, is a private owner in a subdivision and he religiously pays his real property tax on his land and his building. Somewhere along the line, he decided to migrate to the United States and intends to stay there uh, somehow for a reasonable time of between 5 to 10 years. And uh, the Iglesia de Cristo getting to know about the possibility of uh, the big uh, compound and the building uh, which can be used in effect as a church or even a site of an additional church for the Iglesia de Cristo decided to enter into a rent or lease agreement with the owner for five years. And so it came to pass that the owners went to the United States and Iglesia de Cristo started using the property. When the city uh, assessor did not get any payment of its real property tax during the subsequent year when the owner left for abroad, it issued an assessment and an effort to collect real property from the Iglesia de Cristo. And the Iglesia de Cristo said that, uh, you know, you cannot impose the tax on us because we are not the owner of this property. And so the question is, can the owner of the property who is now abroad be, uh, be made liable to pay the real property tax that it used to pay? If you were the counsel for the owner of the property, you now invoke that at the time that the Iglesia de Cristo took over the property and in actual use of that property for religious purposes, then the exemption by reason of the use of the property for religious purposes came into operation. And so during the five-year lease that the property normally taxable at the real property taxes being used for religious purposes by the Iglesia de Cristo, the city assessor cannot collect on the real property tax of an otherwise taxable uh, property because during that interregnum of time, the use of the property is now in the hands of a religious organization the Iglesia de Cristo. Now, if we pursue, uh, further proceed, what if after five years, the owner, lessor, and the lessee Iglesia de Cristo decided not to continue with the lease? And so what happened was uh, the religious organization got out of the property and that property was leased to a second uh, lessee. And this time, it is a trading company associated with Lazada. Will Lazada be asked to pay the real property tax? Or will it be the original owner that the property is being used for commercial purposes? The answer is that, re, that that particular property now being used for a non-exempt activity will be subject to tax. The next question is, who pays the tax? The answer is the real property is taxed on actual use even when the user is not the owner. So that the owner who is in the United States will not be liable for the real property tax. It is Lazada that becomes liable to pay the real property tax. So you will notice the property came from a taxable property under the owner who is using it. Then when the lease contract with the Iglesia de Cristo came into being, that particular real property tax on that property is not due because of the use uh, of the property which is religious, which is one of the exemptions. But after the religious use has been over, the subsequent lessee user is now engaged in business and therefore will now be taxable again for real property. So there are three uh, taxpayers, the first and the third, would have to pay the tax. The middle one is exempted from real property taxation due to the religious nature of the property. And so ladies and gentlemen, 
these are the major points on real property taxation. In terms of the uh, our publics, not only the uh, provinces, the cities and the municipalities in Metro Manila should be interested to take a look at this very brief discussion of real property. As a matter of fact, if you are an owner or user of real property, you should be excited to find a material in YouTube that you can keep on uh, watching in order for you to learn real property taxation. And of course, I reiterate my dedication of this not only to our provin provinces and cities and municipalities in Metro Manila, I again reiterate my dedication to my struggling law students at the University of Manila. This is our effort to allow you to learn law under the present pandemic situation. And we believe that this online YouTube uh, feeds to you, regardless of whether you have enrolled or not, will be a more significant manner of learning at your own pace. And you are not therefore subjected to the terroristic recitation, especially on taxation, which is one of the more difficult subjects that your uh, professors normally would be subjecting you to. And so thank you very much for watching this Real Property Talks. We have so many other uh, uploads in YouTube uh, coming up after this would be a discussion on the general principles of local taxation and we are rerunning the slides on uh, municipal taxation by reason that some tables have to be updated. Marami pong salamat at mabuhay po kayong lahat. I love you.